Good Packer Nation morning, everybody out there. It is Friday. It's Prediction Friday, the first Prediction Friday of the regular season for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, give me a heart if you're jumping on here and you are happy that Packers football is right around the corner. Last night, NFL got kicked off regular season. Ye freaking haw. And it turned out to be a fantastic game. Um, my prediction, I had, I had the Panthers win in this one. I actually had Denver up until game day. And when I made my prediction, I flip-flopped. I should have went with my uh, first choice. Um, I had the Panthers, I had the Panthers uh, 24-17. Ended up being a one-point game on a missed field goal um, and was really an exciting game. We did some over and under before. So uh, we, we had over and under Trevor Simeon with two interceptions. He, he did have the one, but played a, a very good game and actually a better game than I thought he was going to play. Uh, Cam Newton, a touchdown on the ground. We did it over and under on that. Yes, he did have his touchdown on the ground. I saw that. Vaughn Miller, plus or minus two sacks. He got one. That's at the very end there, but in a very crucial time. And Jonathan Stewart, we did. We asked, would Jonathan Stewart have over or under 65 yards? He had 64 yards in the game. So if you took the under on that, um, then you were right. Shane says they froze the kicker just in time. That's for sure. Uh, Well-timed timeout. Uh, yeah, jump on. Let me know who you are and where you're coming at me from. Let's do some Packer Nation roll call, and then we'll talk about our game. Terry is here. Sheena, Tony, Jeff. Good to see you guys. Tim and Jane. Uh, Samantha, Lynn. Uh, Trevor Simeon. Yes, he did do pretty well. Played a pretty good game. I was a little bit shocked, to be honest. I thought that he would have more. Here, Kim, Deb, Joshua, and Brenda. Good to see all of you guys. MJ is back. LB, hey, how you doing? LB Smith is here in the house. Linda, Humberto, and Trent is here this morning. Good morning there, cuz. Tommy is on. Joshua, good to see all you guys. Well, let's talk about some Packer Nation football. Anybody got a heart for, uh, for talking about a, a game that is right around the corner, a Sunday game? Packers versus the, uh, I, w- I almost said Carolina Panthers. <laughs> <laughs> Jacksonville Jaguars. This is going to be an interesting game. I actually was interested to watch. It looked to me like uh, the Panthers were not truly prepared for the environment in Denver, which is always different up at Mile High. And it made me uh, kind of question my own pick for today because I, I am still uh, I'm still going over the idea that will the Packers be conditionally prepared. Conditionally, that's not the right way to use conditionally. Will they be prepared in the conditioning sense for a hot game, a full game in Florida, uh, in Jacksonville? I have my doubts. I know we've there's been a lot of talk. Uh, we posted twelve up did a post uh, for us that uh, sort of researched that, and uh, I know also that uh, the strength and conditioning coach, I think it was, got up in front of the team. And informed them that Jacksonville's weather was roughly six degrees hotter than it was in Green Bay. That's not my. That's not what I question. I question whether we are ready to play a full game of football when none of our starters have hardly played a snap. They've gone out and practiced. They did practice indoors and closed the doors. They may be ready for the heat. This is heat for 65, 70 snaps, maybe 75 snaps. We've been. That was our goal last year, I think, to get to. Um, I am. That's the one question mark I have. Other than that, I am. I am all in on this game. I think it is, like I said, a big opportunity. You guys know um, my strategy for this game would probably be uh, stretch these guys out. Let's throw some, some short passes. Let's let uh, Lane Taylor sort of get in his groove a little bit. Obviously, Treader is new. Obvi- uh, although I will say, you know, Lane Taylor's strength is the run blocking aspect and not the pass blocking aspect. But again, that's why I say quick passes, quick outs. Let's go trip. Uh, give the ball to Randall Cobb. Give the ball to Jared Aberderis. Let him make a person miss. We've seen that they can do this. Um, and so that's how I would do it. But again, I'm not predicting that to happen. What I'm predicting is exactly this. I think I may have mentioned this yesterday. Uh, I am predicting the first play from scrimmage is Eddie Lacy, and we run directly off Lane Taylor's hip. And you want to know why? You guys think about this. I just feel like this is what Coach McCarthy is going to do to prove everybody that we're okay, to prove all the sit and cut haters wrong. We're gonna we're gonna run right off Lane Taylor's hip. First play from scrimmage. Uh, Peter wants to see Eddie Lacy break tackles. Oh yeah, he's ready to do it. Not only that, he has added to his repertoire the ability to beat people around the edge now. I think this is a dangerous Eddie Lacy that uh, defenses are facing right now.
now. And of course, the Jacksonville Jaguars are built pretty well for that. Um, but uh, I think Eddie Lacy is going to have a good day. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, Ricky, first pass is to Jordy. Yeah, first pass. I, I and that, okay, Ricky, see if you're with me because I, I kind of agree with that because I know that Aaron Rodgers just can't wait to get the ball to Jordy Nelson. And and add to that, Rodgers knows Nelson isn't going to be available for the whole game. At some point, they're probably going to pull him out just to make sure he doesn't uh, he doesn't uh, you know not re-injure, but just to keep him on a pitch count is what they've said they're going to do. All right, uh, LB Smith has Lacy with 140 yards. Um, I think Lacy will break 100 in this game. Uh, I hope he does that in the middle two quarters, and then we and then rolling on out uh, uh, into the fourth quarter that we're still able to run the, run the ball. So, uh, with that said, we are ready for some game predictions, guys. What are your score predictions? There's no holding back now. You got to lay it on the table, Packer Nation. Let me know what you think. Let's read off some game predictions. Packers versus Jacksonville Jaguars. This is going to be an important game. Start of the season. We saw how dejected the Panthers looked when they walked off the field 0-1. Uh, and uh, that's not a, not a place that we as Packer Nation want to see our Packers in. LB says 35-20 Packers. Um, Samantha 23-17 Packers. 24-14 Packers says Lyle. Uh, don't discount the Jackson Jacksonville defense. I don't, but I think they're going to have to develop. Uh, Maureen is making sure. Uh, Linda, 35-7. Terry, 31-17. 31-17 says Joshua as well. Maurice says 28-7. Trent's got 28-10, Green Bay. And Brenda, 28-9. Looks like a lot of us think that this Packers team is going to be back to its 2014 form where we can average 30 points a game. I think we will be, too. I don't think we will be in this game. I think we'll be close, but um, this this uh, here's there's two reasons that I'm I think that in this game we may not quite break the thirty. Although man, we could blow this thing wide open. Um, one is uh, I think we're going to run the ball more, so I think we're going to be running out more clock, which means we're not going to be quite scoring as often. I suspect uh, Chad says seventy eight to three. <laughs> uh, I'll take it. I mean, uh, let's set some records here while we're at it. Sean's got 21-14. I am going to say that we will score 28, though, in this game. Um, and the, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Bortles has a lot to prove. Um, it was not a good rushing team last year. I think that hurt Blake Bortles' development because they had to rely on him more than, hopefully, than they would have liked. Uh, I think he's a, a good player looking to get great, um, but by no means elite. Uh, I suspect that um, if it weren't for the fact that Chris Ivory was, has got a bad calf, I would have this notion that Chris Ivory would get more, possibly get more snaps than Yeldon in this game. I think together, um, write it on the board. <laughs> That's right. I'll write it on the board. I'll write it on the board. I got my pen out. All right. I got 28 pack. Okay. And again, and also I did, it, by the way, if you didn't catch it at the beginning, I did say that I was wrong about last night's game. I flip-flopped at the last minute. Should have gone with my... All through the, the preseason, I thought that this game was going to be very different than the game than the, the Super Bowl matchup. Um, and I thought that, that uh, Denver was going to pull it out. And then I flip-flopped at the last. I said 24-17 Panthers and got it wrong. But I got Packers with 28. And write it on the board. How many points can Jacksonville score against us? And uh, let's do an over-under while I finish that. Do you think, Packer Nation, and again, we do over-under, thumbs up. We're doing opposite sides of the emoji continuum for over-under, okay? Thumbs up is over. Uh, angry face is under. Will the Packers beat the, Carolina, or the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars by double digits, by 10 or more? Let's see some over or under. Uh, will the Packers beat the, the Jacksonville Jaguars by double digits? We got overs coming across right now. Um, I'd love to see that, and I do think that is a possibility. I do think that we could seriously, if we get in our group, we got over. Oh, man. It's a blue streak. All right. A lot of people think we're going to beat these guys by double digits. There might be a little emotion in this, however, I will say, since we are talking to Packer Nation. We got some unders coming in, the realists among us. Um, I do think Jacksonville is going to have trouble scoring on us. 
I think we have such a deep defensive backfield, and now we've got Clay Matthews on the outside. I think we're going to give Bortles some trouble. Uh, I think it's going to be, I think we could make it a very difficult way to start the season for him. Let me stop for some coffee because I know if Jared is out there, this is again the uh, cut bottle coffee mug that I made myself. If you got a roller blade and a few brackets, you can make a, you can do the same thing. Uh, a little hazelnut coffee this morning. Um, I think we can make it difficult for, for Blake Bortles. I think the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars are going to want to run the ball and if they can, of course, if, if, if we can, if Blake Martinez, if Martinez and Ryan, Martinez and Thomas can stop the run, this could be a very long day for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I do believe it, folks. Uh, so I am going to, oh, I'm going to do first, I'm going to do another over under, okay? Uh, over or under two uh, interceptions. Will Blake Bortles have over or under two interceptions in this game? Packers have shown in the preseason that they are a they are they want to be because it's preseason. I'll say want to be because the regular season has not come around yet. They want to be once again a very ball hawking defense. And with hey, thanks, Jared. Jared's on. I didn't see you earlier, man. Good to see you. Um, a very ball hawking defense, and with Clay Matthews and Julius Peppers finally getting out on the field for significant reps. Uh, and of course, Nick Perry coming on strong as well. Um, it looks good. Uh, I think we can shape things up. I think we can make it very difficult for Blake Bortles. If he can't run the ball, it is going to be a long day, I will say. Um, I think they're going to try to come at us with the tight end. But uh, I, I, again, that, that goes to the question of our linebackers. Uh, it, but if our if we can if we can stay in nickel and dime, uh, and then we're going to get coverage sacks, and we are going to when we don't get sacks, we're going to have a chance at an, a miss thrown ball, and it's a game of inches. This ball hawking defense, you know, how about Ha Ha Clinton Dix back there? Um, how about these new kids, Kentrell Bryce? I mean, these are guys we're going to we are going to rely on Morgan Burnett getting back there, uh, it, and we'll see about Chris Banjo what his injury. He's on the injury list and did not participate, and we'll. See I guess it'll be a game day decision as to whether he plays. I think the, the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to have a struggle scoring against this Packer defense. So with that said, I am going to give the, the Jaguars uh, 13 in this game. I will say 13 points. So write it on the board. I've got the Packers 28, Jags 13, and that is my prediction that I have to stick to. Uh, no matter where I write or post or video blog or anything like that, I'm sticking to it because I know if I don't, I can't go around and like change my prediction elsewhere and hedge my bet because I know one of you guys is going to nail my to the wall if I try to do that. So I, that's my pick and I'm sticking with it. Again, Brenda's got 28.9. If you haven't put your pick up, go ahead and do so. We are going to close the show with that unless I come up. Again, it's Friday. Is there anything that you guys want to talk about right now? What are you excited to see? on this Packer team rolling out right now. Uh, Jordy and Allen Robinson both going to have uh, 100 plus games, looks like. Yeah, that is a possibility. Uh, although I would, I'm not sure. I think Jordy, actually, I'm not sure for both of those, partly because Jordy, I think, is going to be on a pitch count. And I think if he makes a splash early, they may just they may just pull him right away. If we get out and if we get out ahead, they may be a little bit conservative and manage Jordy Nelson, which is fine by me because again, that week two matchup, if we can pull off the Jacksonville Jaguars, that week two matchup becomes extremely important. Josh says two picks and two fumbles for Bortles. Ooh, yeah, and I mean, look at what what is Julius Peppers best at? I mean, this guy is so long. He comes around the edge. We could have Bortles fumbling all over the place. Um, Sean Griffin is excited to see how well Martinez plays. Yes, we talked about that ye yesterday, and I was actually reflecting the podcast from over at Packers.com uh, where uh, Wes and Mike get on. It's Packers Unpl Unscripted. Sorry, I think that's the correct name. Really, really great pa podcast. I love listening to it, so check it out on Packers.com. Um, but but it was like the three of us were having a conversation because the minute they brought up Martinez, I was asking, man, it would be great if we could just, if he could handle the middle by himself and we could go dime, we are going to destroy these guys. And that's exactly what they kind of said. It's like, that's a, but I mean, they were talking about how that's a lot of pressure on Martinez. Uh, 
And generally speaking, I don't expect the coaching staff to do that, but I, I'm kind of excited about the prospect. And if I was co a coach on the Green Bay Packers, I would be tempted to sit him down, look him in the eye and say, listen, we are going to count on you, brother. You are, you are going to become machine as, and you're going to do it Sunday, September 11th against the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's your coming of age, my friend, and put him out on the field. Of course, he'd have a few mistakes, but just let the kid learn and then think how ready he'd be uh, for the Minnesota Vikings and Adrian Peterson, where they're certainly going to stack the box much more than they do uh, against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, a lot of people excited about Cook. Uh, who's excited? Who thinks Cook's going to make a big splash in this game? If you think Cook's going to make a big splash, give me a thumbs up out there. I think Cook is going to have an impact in this game. Uh, if they if they were to play the strategy that I would like, and that is, you know, uh, spread these guys out, force them outside, you know, get Cook and line up on uh, outside, uh, throw the slants, throw the quick outs, force the defense to take a couple steps wide, and then run the ball down their throat with Eddie Lacy and James Starks into the end of the first and all the way through the second and into the third quarter. Of course, we'd mix it up a little bit, but then uh, if we, uh, you know, as we mix it up and as we get a feel for the score at that point, we can either run the run out the clock with Eddie Lacy and keep the ball on the ground uh, or take a, a little more of a chance here and there, but we will see. Um, Anthony says, hope all stand for the national anthem. I've made my comment on that too, although, you know, which I guess I better rehash it in case you didn't hear it. Is I, you know, I'm for free speech, but I don't think that's a helpful way to, to make a social statement, to be quite honest. So uh, you can agree or disagree with me as, as you wish, because that's okay. Uh, but yeah, I'm not for it. I, I, um, uh, so uh, Cobb's going to be the wild card. That's a good point. LB is saying Cobb is gonna, could be the wild card in this one. Um, I think... Uh, Cook is going to have a, an exciting day. Uh, I think Cobb could very well have a great day. I think Cobb could be our 100-yard catch uh, uh, receiving yardage man out there because, again, if they throw to him, drop back out of the trips formation, um, we saw Cincinnati just gash the Jaguars with that formation. And uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, Rosie says, I hear it'll be a hot game and our pack hasn't played in such a hot game since. Will it affect us? And that's a good question. We've talked about that. And the, uh, the coaching staff has mentioned that the average temperature in training camp between Jacksonville and Green Bay has only been about six degrees. Um, so is the, the temperature itself isn't really going to be an issue. What is, of course, we know to hydrate, but we say we know to hydrate every year, and we've got somebody coming off with a, a calf ha or a hammy or something like that. Uh, so I, I think it will have an effect. I'm not worried about the temperature so much as, Rosie, these Packers starters have not played a full game yet. You get in game shape by playing the game of football. Uh, yes, they closed the doors at the uh, Hudson Center or whatever and, and, and brought in heat and humidity, et cetera, et cetera. They didn't play in it for three hours straight. They didn't play in it for 65 snaps, 70 snaps out there. Uh, so that's what I'm concerned about. I think Eddie Lacy can be the workhorse in this. Uh, he's another one I'm expecting to have a good game. I think he needs to be the workhorse because he's the one that's got as much mileage on him as anybody else, and he, he is in as good a conditioning as anyone else out there. And when I say that, I'm not, not saying that these guys aren't ready to play football, but I am concerned, and we've seen other coaches uh, run this gambit of protecting your, your veterans in the preseason, uh, but then it takes them a little while to get into game shape during the season itself. So we'll see if that happens. I think the Packers, you know, that said, I believe the Packers are not going to go out there and try to do a whole bunch of no huddle, a whole bunch of hurry up. Um, I expect they might the first series or so, um, and we'll see how it goes. Um, I got Phil on. He's, hey, Phil, how you doing, man? I believe elevation and game conditioning did in Carolina last night. Exactly. I was relating that to what the Packers are going to run into. It's not a huge difference, but it's enough to make a difference in your gameplay when it comes down to the wire. And I think there is possibly, it's obviously elevation is different than heat and humidity. Uh, but I think there is maybe a little bit of a correspondence and we might see a little bit of effect on this Green Bay Packer team. Again, I don't think it's going to affect the outcome of the game as far as who wins or loses. So uh, my prediction, in case you missed it, I've got it on the board written down. I got 28-13. I think the Packers are one of those teams that can score an average of 30 points a game. I think in this one we might come up just shy of that. Um, but uh, 
but we'll see. 28-13, I've got the Packers winning this one. If you haven't put up your score, you can go ahead and do so. I'm going to close it up. I know I talked. Uh, we've talked about this and waited for this game for so long, um, and it's finally here. Uh, Jeff says the Heat will be a factor. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think the Heat. You know, I think the Heat is going to be a factor because these guys haven't played a full game in it. So is Brett? Oh, is how's Brett? I think some people are asking out there. Brett's fine. Brett's going to be fine. Um, the, the 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 sad thing for Brett is this was his chance to have a full five game preseason, which is really priceless to a young kid uh, trying to make his way in the NFL. And of course, we saw Joe Callahan stepped up and he made his mark on the Packers, and he made enough of a mark that the Packers kept him on the 53-man roster. But I think Hundley's going to be fine. You know, he just ended up uh, sacrificing a preseason that really would have been like pure gold for Brett Hundley this year. And of course, we all, I want, he was, he was, I was more excited about Brett Hundley in the preseason than anybody else, frankly. Uh, Martinez, Kenny Clark, any of these guys. Um, yeah, Jared says Brett, Brett will bounce back. Yeah, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Um, one guy we want to watch out there is Kenny Clark. Uh, Kenny Clark with a little bit of a lackluster preseason. He is going to be called upon with Pennell serving his suspension. It'll be interesting to see how Kenny Clark holds up. And again, Kenny Clark, in, in, if he's playing that 0-1 technique, then he is going to have Martinez directly behind him. Uh, if he plays that and we're in dime formation, for example, that could be a weakness. It could be a weak point for the Green Bay Packers. Dave says 23-17 Packers. We're kind of on the same page there, Dave. Although, I guess uh, we did over-under. Uh, will the Packers win by double digits? And I guess with my score now, uh, I am saying over on the double digits because I do think the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to have a fit scoring against the Packers defense. So uh, I think uh, Clay Matthews is just chomping at the bit to get out there. I think Julius Peppers, when he gets, you know, they're going to they're gonna be able to keep him more fresh. Julius Peppers is a guy that comes on when the postseason rolls around. He is an absolute beast. He's a beast during the regular season as well, but now he is, we're going to be able to take some mileage off his tires. And uh, uh, yes, uh, LB is saying that Daniels is going to push Smith. I think that I watched when Kenny Clark was in there and he was playing right next. There were times when they moved Daniels around and he wasn't playing right next to Kenny Clark. When Clark was next to Daniels, he played better. It was my, um, it was just a sort of anecdotal uh, little poll I took. But uh, yeah, um, Daniels is the big boy. He can't wait to get out on the field. I can't wait to watch this guy just destroy people. I mean, you got to love my Daniels. Underrated. Everybody thought he was too short too small and he just gets out there and freaking destroys people he has changed the face of the Packer defense let's put a heart out there for Mike Daniels making the Packer defense nasty if you got if you like a nasty Packer defense just give Mike Daniels a heart right now uh, it's not that Clay Matthews didn't get nasty but it's just a different way that uh, Mike Daniels just freaking nasty out there it's a brawl it's a street fight I love it in the trend when it's a street fight and Mike Daniels brings it to the table and he is bringing it to Jacksonville. Watch out Jaguars. You better get ready because Daniels is coming down your throat, Blake Bortles. All right. A lot of people liking that. I get on my soapbox once in a while. Um, yes, Terry Haney says Mike Daniels is a wrestler. Or you may be mentioning Kenny Clark because Kenny Clark is also a wrestler. Um, yes, it matters. These guys know leverage. If you come out, if you've ever wrestled, uh, Trent, Trent there out there, you know what this is about. If you are a wrestler, you know leverages. You know how to use your hands. You know how to leverage and torque people. I wrestled just enough to know how good wrestlers are at leverage because I was, I thought I was strong. I was strong. Um, but these guys knew so much more about leverage than me. And, uh, I, some of them flopped me around like a fish. I want a time or two, um, a time or two, but, um, uh, not as good as some of these guys, but, uh, Trevor says, yes, sir. Uh, we are going to take it to the Jacksonville Jaguars. We are going down there, um, with we're, we're seeing red folks, uh, the Packers offense, they, they have downplayed the idea, and I know the coaches have said it doesn't even come up in the meetings about how they've got to get out there and have something to prove because of last year. Um, but they are seeing red. The Packers offense wants to get – it's time to release the hounds, folks. 
it's time to release the hounds on this Packer offense. We got a retooled Eddie Lacy. He got out there and chiseled his body into perfect shape. We so a retooled Eddie Lacy, who had to sit there and listen to everybody calling him fat last year. He is in the stable, ladies and gentlemen of Packer Nation. We, we got Aaron Rodgers, who had to sit out the entire preseason after having to play an entire season last year without Jordy Nelson. He's in the stable. He's chomping at the bit. It's time to release the hounds, ladies and gentlemen of Packer Nation. We've got guys like Jordy Nelson who had to sit after not being able to play a meaningful game of football for 19 months. He's in the stable, ladies and gentlemen of Packer Nation. It is time to release the hounds. These guys are wanting to get out there. We've got Jared Cook who had to play eight years, I think it was, under lesser quarterbacks. Not who could not place the ball where he needed it. He is excited to get out there and have Aaron Rodgers start throwing him the ball, start catching some touchdowns, start blowing some people away. He is a beast and he is in the stable. Ladies and gentlemen, it's about time to release the hounds. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. <laughs> Sunday's coming, folks. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to let you go with that. We have got, I, I, I can't wait. We've got a great weekend coming up, guys. It's Friday. You can roll into your weekend. If you make it through the workday today, you have made it to another weekend, a great weekend, because regular season Packers football is back. Um, if you haven't got on to GreenBayPackerNation.com, jump on and get the app. Hit the, the post that says, get the app before the game even comes out. Click on that, fill out the form, and I will send you a personal invite to our new game. A lot of people are super stoked about that. Uh, Elias or Elias, I hope I'm saying this right, is got is predicting Jared Cook to have two touchdowns in this game. That'll be interesting. Uh, <clears throat> Jared Dixon has got the, the flags up. He's saying it's Saturday. Man, <clears throat> why you got to rub it in? I need to drink my coffee and think about that. I'm going to have to come to your, your place every Friday here. How can I create like a time machine out of this? But Jared, man, you always got to rub, always got to rub our noses in it here in the States, man. Um, oh, I love it. Tony, great quote, cry havoc and release the dogs of war. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, Sheena, you have a good Friday too. All of you guys have a good Friday. Go to PackerNation.com, fill out the form. I would love to have you play our new game. You will know, you will have it before your friends even know about it. So let your friends in on it too. Let them know about it and send them our way, would you? Anthony is here. Good, good to see you, man. Shane and Jared is laughing it up down there with an evil grin, I'm sure. You guys have a great, fantastic Friday. Have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy football. I will talk to you again tomorrow and go pack. Hey, get the ring.